Okay, so a quick warning before we start this one off. Um, this one's about a chimpanzee attack. Uh, it happened in the 2000s. I'm gonna warn you, it's super graphic uh, when it comes to the details of the attack itself. So I just want to give you a fair warning. There are some very disturbing details in this story. So just please keep that in mind. Like and subscribe if you're new. This is Animal Al. Welcome to When Animals Attack. This is about Mo, the chimpanzee. So this story occurred in West Covina, California. I'm gonna take you guys back to the 60s. Our two main protagonists for the story are a man named St. James and a woman named LaDonna. Now St. James was this really tall, well-built car head. Like he loved automobiles. Uh, he would build hot rods. LaDonna was this beautiful, prototypical 60s blonde girl. Uh, you know, and by all accounts, uh, she was a very sweet woman as well. And essentially, these two had been dating throughout high school, okay? And for years, uh, St. James was just very reluctant to get married to LaDonna, despite all the pressure that was going on. And it was mainly because of the fact that he felt that this marriage would put, would basically get in the way of him and his uh, obsession with building cars and hot rods, which is kind of sad, you know? You've been with this girl through high school and cars are the reason you don't want to marry her. I mean, you know, come on, man. Um, but anyways... So she's his longtime girlfriend. He's getting all this pressure from all angles, his, his family, his friends, LaDonna herself. Like, when are you going to pop the question? You know what I mean? So then years go by, and finally in 1966, uh, St. James decides that he's going to marry his high school sweetheart, LaDonna. And so the marriage is planned, and so the day of the marriage now arrives. Everyone's waiting at the church, everyone's really happy, but there's one person missing. The groom. So essentially, St. James did not show. He didn't show up to his wedding. He left LaDonna just standing there at the altar. He left her hanging by herself, which is super embarrassing, right? Uh, not just for him, but for his bride and the family. So it's a small town and gossip spread like wildfire. Everybody was, you know, super upset with uh, St. James. He could feel the pressure. And to be quite frank with you, he just couldn't deal with it after some time. So, so then not long after he stood LaDonna up, he randomly decides, and this is super random, he just impulsively decides that he's gonna board this merchant ship that was to sail around the world without telling anybody. And he boards this merchant ship uh, as, a, uh, as a deckhand. And so off he goes on this voyage around the world. And so he reaches the coast of Africa, right around Tanzania, okay, which is actually where I'm from, I mentioned in the last video. And what ends up happening is a ship ends up suffering this damage. And so then him and the crew are forced to stay in Tanzania while they're repairing the ship. So anyways, weeks end up going by. And so what ends up happening is St. James ends up making some friends with some local hunters and villagers. So one day he decides that he's going to go into the bush with these hunters and go on this little expedition with them. So as he's in the bush, and this is now all according to, how, uh, to St. James's account of how this happened. So what ends up happening as they're in the bush is that a group of poachers, they were slaughtering this female chimpanzee that had just given birth, okay? And as this was happening, St. James notices a baby chimp there. He takes this baby chimp with him to, to save it, right? And essentially brings it back to the village. Now, one of the villagers there, one of the locals that St. James made friends with, he ends up naming this baby chimp Mogambo, okay? And basically St. James at this point, he's just so in love with this chimp. He's like, you know what? I'm actually going to keep this chimp. It's going to be my new pet, okay? So he names it Mo, uh, which is short for Mogambo, right? And essentially he starts finding a way how he can get back to America. So what ends up happening is the local villager that actually gained the privilege of naming Mo, he, he gets St. James in touch with some local uh, or some German missionaries. And these German missionaries end up helping St. James book a flight back to California. And of course, St. James brought Mo along with him on the plane, which just goes to show that you could, how, how, how easy it was to just get on a plane back then. You know, you could just bring a chimp on your lap on the plane. That's what happened. And so after they arrive in West Covina, St. James's mom is there at the airport to pick him up, but so is his ex fiance LaDonna, okay? And she's fuming at this point. Remember, this is a small town, and LaDonna, LaDonna's mom and St. James's mom, they were very close. Uh, so LaDonna just ended up being there uh, with uh, St. James's mom, but she wouldn't even talk to him. Like, St. James's mom was very happy to see him. She hugged him, and, you know, she was thrilled. She fell in love with Mo right away when she saw him, but LaDonna was just fuming. You know, you can't just leave your 
a girl hanging at the altar and expect her to be happy and just come back after months, right? So anyways, some time goes by, a few days go by. And LaDonna's mom, like I said, she's very close to uh, St. James's mom. And so LaDonna starts visiting St. James's mom. And St. James stays with his mom. And what ends up happening is she ends up falling in love with Mo, right? And she starts begging LaDonna to come with her. So eventually LaDonna starts coming with her. And she right away gets enamored by Mo. Not even, didn't even take that long once she actually gave it a chance. And so she falls in love with Mo. And thereafter, also falls back in love with St. James. And then finally, after some time, after a couple years, these guys end up finally tying the knot. So they get married. St. James shows up. And uh, what's uh, actually adorable is uh, Mo was the best man at the wedding. You know, he showed up in his little tux and he was holding hands with the flower girl. You know, he just, he, he was just very sweet. Everybody loved him. You know, he uh, showered people with kisses at the wedding. And uh, he also ended up getting drunk, as a matter of fact. He would just run around uh, uh, people's tables and start sipping champagne from their glasses. And he ended up getting so drunk that he ended, he ended up clinging to one of LaDonna's friends all night and ended up peeing all over her and peeing all over the place. And people just reported that it was the funniest thing. Like everybody reported it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen in their lives. You know what I mean? This is before YouTube. So. You know, a lot of uh, crazy things like this you can't just find, right? So everybody was just like, wow, never seen anything like this. So so then now the year is 1970, by the way. This is when they get married. And uh, like I said, you know, uh, the whole town is basically, they fell in love with him right at that, at that marriage. So he was already quite popular, Mo. So now a year into their marriage, LaDonna had to undergo a hysterectomy due to cancer, unfortunately. And she finds out that she cannot conceive. She will, ne she will never be able to conceive. Um, this obviously breaks her heart and it unsurprisingly, you know, it caused her to fall into this deep depression. And in fact, she even suggested to St. James that, you know what, why don't you just get married to somebody else? Because I want you to have kids and I know you want kids, you know, and that was really sad to hear, right? Like she just wanted him to be happy and be able to have kids. But St. James is like, you know what, I'm not going anywhere. And as a matter of fact, we already do have a child and that child is Mo. And so... What ends up happening is this ends up bringing the th the trio's bond so close, ends up tying it so close together. So basically, basically he was like a human child to them. Like you know, they would do everything together. That they would ride this three seater bicycle around town together. You know, they would uh, eat meals together. Um, they would watch Mo's favorite cowboy and Indians uh, show, and then like link arms and fall asleep together on the living room floor. You know, with some really like adorable details and stuff like that uh, in the story as well. And not to mention, they'd also uh, dress up Mo in, in human clothing every day. So Mo was basically like living the life of a young, of, of a young growing up human boy, okay? Which was really cool, you know, just to kind of like picture. So anyways, a couple of years into their time with Mo, and you know, Mo's growing now. He's basically a shorter, much hairier human at this point, you know, with his human clothes walking around. And you know, like since it's uh, the, the rumors of uh, these kinds of things, they spread like wildfire. The city of West Covina ended up filing charges against the Davises in order to take Mo away from them, okay, for harboring a wild animal. Like, you just can't do that, right? So, so what ends up happening is a couple years into their marriage, the city of West Covina ends up filing charges against the Davises for harboring a wild animal. And so a court case ensues. And the crazy thing is that right the, the day of the court case, like right when Mo arrived at the courthouse, he arrived at the courthouse in this checkered shirt. Uh, and white pants all right and he actually uh and he actually kissed the court reporter right when he came in and he was playing with the bailiff's keys and he was just really sweet to everybody and uh, as a matter of fact like everybody just fell in love with him at that courtroom and it was said that actually the moment that mo had come in to the courthouse the moment that the judge laid eyes on him he knew that he was gonna let the davises keep them but he just wanted to see what would happen and he also ended up saying, like, he just wanted to see what it would be like to have a, uh, uh, an ape on trial, right? So essentially, Mo wins everybody's hearts over at the courthouse. The Davises get to keep him. As a matter of fact, the judge even said that he was better behaved than most uh, most humans that he's had in the courtroom. So that was actually really funny to hear as well. Um, and I actually believe him. I actually believe the judge because there have been some crazy... Uh, courtroom scenes just even here on YouTube that I've looked at you know but anyways 
the Davises get to keep him after all this. And so so now years go by, okay? Mo, at this point, he's becoming more and more humanized. But at the same time, you know, he's growing, right? So what happened was he would be sleeping on the same bed as the Davises while he was growing up for those first few years. But then as he kept on growing, he actually shot up to about 50 pounds, okay? And at this point, the Davises were like, you know what? We're going to have to get him his own room, okay? But despite doing this, uh, another like cute side detail was that Mo would just still keep coming into the, uh, their room in the middle of the night, almost every night, and just sleep with them. You know what I mean? Kind of like uh, a child would when they're scared or they have nightmares or whatever, or they think the boogeyman's in there or whatever. So that was uh, really adorable as well. And so these guys are really, really close, okay? Clearly, Mo loves, the, loves his owners, his owners love Mo. Basically, they're like his parents, so we want to say owners. But the Davises also mentioned that they saw like this deep understanding and innocence in his eyes as well, which kind of like played more to their love for him. It kind of like added more to their love for him because they thought that they, they saw him as a human, as a human child, not as an animal. Right. So I'm just clarifying that they really, really love this chimp like it was their own child. OK. Um, and another side detail was, you know, not only was he wearing human clothes and, you know, like uh, not only would he be doing all these human activities, but he loved coloring. Uh, he would play with, uh, you know, human uh, human child toys. Um, he uh, he actually also ended up being featured in some TV shows and movies as well. So he was sort of like a mini celebrity Mo was right. And at this time, St. James, uh, he was a NASCAR driver and he still was into his cars and he was also a mechanic. And because of that whole NASCAR thing, he was also sort of like a mini celebrity. So these guys were like the peak, were at like the peak of their um, of their lives as a family together. Okay, Mo, Odana, and St. James. So now as time kept on progressing, what ended up happening was that Mo, as he grew older, just like a lot of other chimps, his temperament began changing. He ended up becoming more aggressive. He ended up uh, you know, wanting his way more. He would throw tantrums. Uh, for example, he would cross his arms uh, when he would want a hug and he would just demand that hug. You know what I mean? He would do the steering wheel action that he wants to go uh, when he wants to go for a drive, right? So essentially, he was really starting to act like a spoiled child at this point. Like he just wanted his way. And his aggression also kept on increasing. But anyways, the, the St. James's, they still ended up keeping this chimp, you know, regardless of all this. They knew that, hey, this is, he's getting aggressive, but they still tolerated it, okay? Because they loved him. So through his teens and his 20s, okay, uh, and this is in human years, you know, chimps can live up to uh, 30 or 40, right? Uh, Mo continued to be his playful self, right, at, at, during this time. And at, at this point, he ended up, he was like around four feet. Uh, and it was about 130 pounds. And remember, they're really strong, and we'll get into that, but essentially, this is like a, an adult, okay? Just a shorter adult in their home. And so what happens at this point is St. James, he ends up becoming, his concerns end up growing more and more, okay? Um, he's, he starts doing all this research on chimps, and he begins realizing that no matter what you do, no matter how early in a chimp's life you take them and you expose them to, or try to humanize them, okay? and keep them with humans, they're still almost always going to become much more aggressive as they grow older. And he's going to, and they're going to become hazards around humans, not something you can keep as a pet. And so at this point, this whole fun life and peaceful, like fantasy life that these three have been living together, it ends up starting to take a downfall. It ends up starting to take a turn. It starts crumbling, essentially. And what happens is one day there was this uh, welder uh, that was uh, working on uh, Mo's cage. He ends up dropping this piece of equipment really loudly, and this ends up spooking Mo so much so that Mo ends up running out of the house, and he ends up running out on the street. And right when this happens, you know the cops are alerted, authorities are alerted, animal control, and so they're all trying to contain Mo. The street gets closed down. Um, by the end of this night, Mo ends up injuring uh, one of the police officers' hands. Uh, he ends up scratching an animal control worker, um, and he also dented a police officer's car. So it was a wild night, but surprisingly, the Davises and the city didn't get involved, and the Davises still were allowed to keep Mo. And so that whole incident, somehow they got away with it, and Mo was still able to stay with them. Now, a year goes by from this incident, 
and a woman that had come to visit Mo, like you remember, Mo was kind of like a celebrity, so people would actually come visit Mo uh, at St. James's house, at the Davis's house. And so after being told not to stick her fingers into the cage, which is, you know, something you don't do with any wild animal, right? She ends up doing so anyways. And she has these red, uh, she has this red nail polish on her fingertips, right? On her fingernails. And what ends up happening is Mo bites one of her fingertips off, right? The St. James's right away are just like, it probably thought it was licorice. He probably thought it was licorice. That's one of the treats we give him. But at this point, you know, uh, the city got alerted. And at this point, they basically had enough, and they basically ordered that Mo gets taken away from the Davises. So the day arrives. A couple of days later, uh, police officers, animal control, everyone's at this uh, at uh, the Davises' house. Saint James uh, sees them. He's yelling. He knows what's about to happen. He's screaming. He's asking for a warrant. He's asking for court orders. Uh, but they already had all that. Despite that, he kept screaming. So they had to restrain him. Uh, Ladonna's just there, like sobbing on the side. And uh, Mo's, uh, Mo's basically startled at all these people coming at him. He ends up getting tranquilized with two darts. Um, takes uh, a little bit for them to take effect. So at, they start dragging Mo out because he's gotten weaker from the darts. He's getting weaker and weaker by the second goes. And he's screaming while they're pulling him, uh, dragging him out. And the Davises are just there kind of like heartbroken, crying off to the side, helpless, not able to do anything. It's a really sad situation to think about, but you know, he became a hazard at this point and you're holding a wild animal so you know you have to take into account that a possibility like this can happen right that this is possible anyways so Mo ends up being taken away and he ends up being put in this uh, reservoir this animal reservoir uh, in California and about nine days into this uh, whole ordeal like nine days into him staying at this reservoir the Davises get a call from the reservoir saying that Mo just is refusing to eat and this chimp is about to die. It's literally dying at this point. So the Davises are fuming. They're scared. They're worried. They're they're anxious. They, they literally just get in the car, rush over to the uh, reservoir, and they see that Mo, um, you know, he's malnourished. He's literally weak. But when he sees them, he finally shows a reaction. Now, chimp doesn't know about court and, you know, all these things. So obviously the chimp is really, um, like, wanting to go home. He's, he's saying, like, you know, take me home, whatnot. So... That was also sad, but uh, you know, when he sees them, I believe he did start eating um, again, and uh, like they ate, he ate in, in, the, in their presence. But obviously, the Davises at this point they were super concerned for Mo, so they went and they started this huge legal battle in order to try to gain custody of Mo. So, anyways, after this whole ordeal, Mo still staying at this reservoir. There's still this huge court case going on, and now years go by. So then, finally, in 2004. Mo ends up getting transferred. Uh, this whole court case ends up granting Mo this transfer to this animal sanctuary, or it was like a haven ranch, a safe haven ranch, or an animal haven ranch rather, uh, which was specifically designed for primates. Okay, so they knew the Davises knew that Mo would be much more better off in this uh, facility uh, because of the structure of it and because of the kind of animals that it would accommodate. So the Davises at this point, you know, they. They would bring treats to Mo, uh, you know, and it was the closest thing that they kind of had to the kind of life that they were living before, right? Uh, you know, they, they were allowed to visit him. There was no touching, though, um, you know, and so Mo, whenever he'd want a hug, he'd be super disappointed, wondering why, you know, he'd gesture for a hug, you know, and he'd cross his arms and he wouldn't get one and he'd wonder what's going on. So he'd, he'd be sad from that. So unfortunately, you know, uh, that's the, that, those were the rules of the sanctuary. So anyways, now some quick details before we get into the main attack here. And this is this is where I'm going to warn you guys once again. It's not for the faint of heart. There are some super gory details. I'm going to read straight out of the article. Um, so please do note uh, that viewer discretion is advised for the attack itself. Okay. And now do note that this ranch had seven other primates living in it. And Mo was to be isolated for about two years because essentially primates cannot just, you know, chimps cannot just, especially if they've not been exposed uh, to their own kind uh, from for such a long time and Mo was an adult at this point he's about 38 years old you gotta ease chimps into a new social environment okay uh, because uh, there were seven other primates like I said at this uh, sanctuary so he had to be isolated for a couple of years regardless anyways so here comes the day itself okay so it's March 3rd 2005 
So it's Mo's 39th birthday. And so St. James and LaDonna, they decide that they're going to bring him a cake. They're going to bring him some treats for his birthday. And the, three, the trio will celebrate together at the sanctuary. So the moment they arrive at the sanctuary, St. James, you know, and LaDonna, they excitedly get out of the car. St. James runs over to the cage, uh, to Mo's cage, and he uh, feeds him the cake. Mo devours it right away, and uh, he gestures uh, for his hug and whatnot. And, you know, he's really happy. The three of them are there together with Mo. And, you know, it was the closest that they felt to Mo in a long time because they felt like the sanctuary just, Mo was happier there. And they felt like they could bond with him more because of that. Um, and so they were having a really good time on Mo's 39th birthday on this day. Uh, you know, they were giving him his treats. Mo was very happy. So now here comes the bit and I'm going to read this straight out of the article. I'm going to pin the article in the description for you guys as well. It's by Rich Shapiro. It's called The Worst Attack I've Ever Seen. Okay. Um, yeah, just brace yourself for this one. Here we go. So out of the corner of her eye, LaDonna suddenly notices a large form about 40 feet away from her. It was a chimpanzee, a young adult male, somehow out of its cage, and it was glaring right at her. The chimp held her gaze for a moment, and then charged. St. James rushed to his wife. The animal barreled into LaDonna's back, knocking her into St. James. She wrapped her arms around her husband's neck, but the chimpanzee locked his jaws around the thumb of her left hand, and with a single ferocious jerk of his neck, he tore it off. St. James threw his hysterical wife under the picnic table and pushed her further underneath as the chimp was trying to pursue her. LaDonna was screaming commands meanwhile, saying no, stop, sit, no, stop. The remaining cake was on the table, still in its box, she tried to offer that to the chimp, but the chimp didn't go for it, instead it went straight for her husband. And as St. James confronted the chimp, the 6'2 former running back turned to find a second chimp who was also a male, this one older and bigger, bearing down on him as well. And with both hands he pushed the bigger animal, trying to save himself, but both the chimps ended up pouncing. One of the animals grabbed him in a bear hug before chomping into the bone above his right eyebrow. He then stuck his finger in St. James's right eye, gouging it out. The same animal clamped his teeth onto St. James's nose, biting it off as the other chimp chewed away at St. James's fingers. In the melee, one of the chimps dug in his claws and ripped the skin off the side of St. James's face, causing it to flop over and cover his left eye, temporarily blinding him. One of the primates sunk his teeth into St. James's skull, and he then closed his jaws on St. James's mouth, ripping off his lips and most of his teeth. St. James then tries to put one of his hands down the animal's throat, but the chimp just kept on chewing on it and chewing on it, and he just wouldn't let it go. St. James fell to the ground, no longer able to defend himself, and for at least five minutes, the mauling continued as he lay helpless. One of the chimps gnawed on his buttocks and bit off his genitals. This man literally had his penis and his testicles eaten by this chimpanzee. They ravaged his left foot, leaving it shredded. Blood poured from his body and LaDonna was screaming, but she just couldn't do anything about it. LaDonna reported that it literally looked like her husband was being eaten alive in front of her very eyes and there was nothing she could do about it. Finally, LaDonna's screams ended up drawing the owner of the sanctuary's son-in-law who came running with a .45 caliber revolver and then after struggling to find a clean shot, he opened fired on the young primate. But unfortunately, that shot didn't even have any apparent effect on the chimps. Remember, these chimps are very strong. And Carothers had to race back to his house a few dozen yards away uh, to, to reload with more powerful ammunition. When Carothers returned, he focused on the older male, the primary aggressor, kneeling down, and he shot him once in the head from close range. As the animal fell to the ground, the younger chimp began dragging St. James's mutilated body by this point down a hill leading away from Moses' cage. And dirt was filling St. James's lungs at this point and it was seeping into his bloody openings, uh, into the bloody openings in his body. So St. James was really getting it bad. He was close to dying at this point. While all this was happening, for the briefest of moments, LaDonna looked towards Mo, who was literally sitting in the corner of his cage like a scared child, frozen, seemingly stunned by the whole ordeal. That one young lone chimp at this point continued tearing at St. James's limp body 
with his teeth until finally Carithers caught up to him and shot him once in the chest with that powerful ammunition which ultimately put an end to the horrifying attack. St. James, who was lying face down at this point and who was totally limp, felt the lifeless animal fall off his back and would, could finally breathe a small sigh of relief as the mauling finally came to an end. And there you have it guys, that was the attack and like I said, not easy to hear. Uh, chimpanzees, they are anywhere between one to four times stronger than a person, than a human and an adult average male. And like I said, they have, you know, they have fingers like us, okay? And straight up, they're very powerful animals. You know what I mean? That's significantly stronger than a human being. And to have that kind of power and to have grip, you know, have, uh, have fingers where you can grab things, you know, they, they literally are known to go for your most vulnerable parts. You know, if they're going to attack somebody, they're known to go for your genitals because they know that you need that. You know, they, they, they go for your eyes because you know you need that. They go for your fingers because you know you need that. So everything that you need, they're going to just try to take away from you. So ripping someone's dick off, you know what I mean, is not... This, this isn't the first time chimps have done this. You know, and this is just in reported attacks. So anyways, there you have it, guys. One of the worst chimpanzee attacks of all time, if not the worst. And basically, when it came to the Davises, uh, their lives till this very day, you know, they basically revolve around taking care of St. James and his ailments that he suffered from this attack. You know, getting him to doctor's appointments, uh, looking into new procedures, um, you know, just all his physical difficulties that he had to, uh, you know, that he has to face now because of this uh, ordeal, this horrific incident. You know, he has to, till this day, his family, that's their focus now, just taking care of him. Um, the good news is that the progress is slow, but it continues. And that St. James hopes to have a new mouth and a fully formed uh, left hand. Uh, that's what it said in this article. So hopefully by now he already does have that. Uh, he'll need, he needed to have his upper lip uh, surgically reconstructed. And, and prostodontists will outfit him with a special set of dentures as well, so he can finally eat more easily. Um, and also speak more clearly. And doctors have already designed prosthetic fingertips for the three uh, for the three stumps that he has for fingers on his left hand. So at least that's uh, prog uh, that's progressed over there. And St. James also mentioned in this article that he wants to one day work on his cars again. So hopefully the man already started getting a chance to do that as this article was written before, as I mentioned. Uh, his right hand presents more of a problem than his left uh, since on that hand, most of his thumb is gone. And you know, the thumb is the most important fingers on our hands. So undoubtedly, that's probably really tough for him. And also, not to mention, he has two fingers missing entirely on that hand as well. So that was the aftermath, guys. That's uh, what St. James and LaDonna had to deal with. The lesson from all this is it's really risky keeping wild animals, man. Even from, from birth, you never know what could happen. It wasn't even the animal itself that hurt him. But uh, just the situation, you know what I mean? The circumstances. So... Thanks again for listening, guys. Uh, this uh, was, once again, a little bit of a longer one, but a lot of details in this one. Once again, thanks to the Tooth and Claw podcast uh, for all the details and research they put into these uh, uh, stories. Uh, you know, some of them, some of the stories on this channel are from them, two of them in specific. One I just made about uh, a man that murdered his wife by a snake bite. It's one of the most craziest stories uh, you probably ever hear. I'm going to leave the link for you right up here on the top right and on the end screen. Do check it out. Other than that, I know a lot of y'all haven't been getting notifications, um, so please do check the channel page, um, uh, you know, often. And I will be posting as much as possible, hopefully every few days. And other than that, y'all stay safe and have yourself a good one. Peace.